how a social worker, counselor, therapist can make over $150,000 of passive income. That might sound like an impossible question, but believe it or not, it can be done. And I'm gonna show you how. I went into therapy because I wanted to do some good in the world. I cared about people. I actually got my undergrad in economics and I got a job that I hated. And I realized I don't want to do a job that I hate just for money. And so I went into being a therapist. I got my master's in social work and I studied to become a private practice mental health therapist. That's what I wanted to do. At first I loved it. And I still love doing therapy. I ran groups, I did individual, I enjoyed therapy. But over time, I started to burn out. It started to become more and more difficult. The more people that I, I met with, the more I realized I started to care a little bit less because I was so burned out. I had visions of, of working at a plant nursery or driving a bus or doing something different than therapy. Now you probably feel similar at times, I imagine. If you're a really good therapist, you're gonna feel those things. There's a way that you can make passive income and not be so burned out. I'm gonna show you how. Listen to this video because I'm gonna give you specific steps that will walk you through how to start to make passive income online and not be so burned out. Most therapists don't do this for the money. And I can honestly tell you, I didn't get into this for the money but I'm gonna make over $150,000 this year and I'm not burned out and I'm not doing a ton of therapy sessions. There's a way that you can help more people and provide really good help without having to be in that chair and being burned out day in and day out. There has never been a time where there's more opportunity to get your voice heard, to give people tools for transformation, to walk them through what they can do to alleviate their suffering. YouTube, Facebook, podcasts, all kinds of places where you can get your message heard. So all you have to do is step into it, overcome some of those fears so that you can get your message out there and people will start buying your products. One thing as a therapist, one thing about our business is that we are the product. So when somebody comes in, they need me for an hour in order to get what they want. They pay the fee for the therapy session, to get me for an hour. What that turns into is us therapists trading our time for money. We only make as much as we can according to how long we're there. What we don't do is create passive income. We don't create the opportunity where we can make money while we're not there. As a therapist and as a social worker, as a counselor, there's many opportunities for passive income. You just need to know how to do it and how to start. I have hundreds of testimonials of real life people who have been helped by my content. I've even heard things like, listening to your podcast was better than my therapy session this week. Doing your online program drastically changed our marriage and our lives. I'm not saying this to brag, I'm saying this to tell you that you can change lives through working online as well. It's absolutely possible and it's a real thing. I'm gonna give you several ways that you can get started, but before I do, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna walk you through how to get started, but I wanna warn you, as I do this, don't get overwhelmed. Just take one step at a time. Start to develop a plan and take one step at a time. You don't have to do all of these things in one day. Step one, you need to create an audience. You need somebody to listen. So the best platforms for that are YouTube, podcasting, or social media. But create an audience, you need a tribe. It doesn't need to be massive. You don't need millions and millions of followers, but you need a few fans, a few people who really truly believe in your message in order to start helping them and in order to start monetizing it to make money. There's two ways to start building an audience. First, you speak to their pain. You validate their pain. You want your audience to think, oh, they get it. They understand. They're putting words to what I'm feeling. When you put words to what they're feeling and you describe their pain, they start to trust you. The next thing that you do is you start to give them answers to that pain. How are they gonna transform? 
How are they going to overcome it? When you start to give tools and answers, they start to trust you. Yes, you start to do this from the get-go. You might be thinking, why would I give answers right off the bat? Then what would I sell? The fact of the matter is, is you give free content, a ton of it, and that's how you build trust with your audience. I promise you, they'll still buy your content. Find your platform. What I mean by that is, different things work better for certain things. So for example, um, one of my podcasts is called The Betrayed, The Addicted, and The Expert. So we talk about sex addiction all the time. That's not something that people hop on Instagram and share everywhere on Instagram. Like, hey, I follow this sex addiction thing. You should follow it too. So our platform and where we've developed our audience is a podcast. A podcast is something that somebody can really listen to, subscribe to in a fairly anonymous way. We did that intentionally. And what we found is our Facebook groups and our Instagrams really haven't taken off, but our podcast listeners have. So according to what you're going to address, what is the pain that you're going to target, think about what would be the best format, what would be the best platform to start to get that message out there. Step three, walk the planes and be consistent. Let me explain what this means. When you first start, nobody's gonna be listening. You're gonna feel like you're doing something for no reason at all. What's the point? Nobody cares. I think we had 20 something episodes of our podcast before we realized that, hey, people actually are engaging and listening. So it's uncomfortable at first because you feel like you're failing. You feel like this isn't working. It's important that you see it through for a while, that you stay consistent, especially with, with podcast episodes or YouTube episodes. You're trying to build rapport and trust with your audience. The more you have, the more content you have out there, the more they'll know you and the more they'll trust you. Why I call that walking the plains is because it's like you're walking out into a desert and you don't really know where you're going or why you're going there, but you just need to keep walking forward anyways. You're gonna end up at the place that you wanna end up, but it doesn't feel very comfortable. There's a vulnerability to it. Step four is to monetize it. I've interviewed many people with really big platforms, a lot of followers, and they're making no money off of it. They haven't taken the steps to actually turn it into a business. And it's one of the easiest steps to do, but it's also something that people have a hard time pulling the trigger on and actually doing it. And we as therapists might feel guilty for doing that asking our audience for money, asking them to buy something from us can be uncomfortable, but there's nothing wrong with it. So there's different ways that you can monetize it. Selling courses, getting advertisers, creating subscription accounts and, and platforms where people have to pay in order to be a part of it. All of those are different ways that you can monetize your platform. Step five is to make sure you're in alignment with your passion and your purpose. And the reason why this is so important is because creating episodes, doing a lot of content, if you don't believe in what you're doing and you don't feel passionate about it, you won't do what it's gonna take. You won't stay consistent. You won't, your audience will start to realize that there's not the energy behind it. The messaging isn't there. So it's important that you really are in alignment with what you want to do and what you wanna help and what you wanna create. If this video has been helpful and it's getting those juices flowing, it's making you think, how can you make more passive income? Then you gotta check out my other video. Just click below, why should every good therapist start an online business? And it will help you get started as well.